What is the Oklahoma Sooners plan at quarterback? You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase over at Game Time. He's Jay Smith. I'm John Williams. And before we get to today's topics, we just want to extend our thoughts and prayers to the Venables family uh, after hearing that uh, Julie's cancer has come back and had to have a surgery last week uh, to remove a tumor. I, I, that's got to be weighing heavily on Brent, on his entire family, and so yeah, it it's just crazy. Um, one, how terrible cancer is. It sucks. Got friends, coworkers of my, of my own self that are going through some of that stuff right now. Um, but man, just heart goes out to the Venables family right now. Yeah, definitely. I keep them in your thoughts and your prayers and everything. And, and Brent had mentioned on the coach's show tonight, uh, last night that, uh, it had come back in May. So she's had a, Julie's had a couple of surgeries and I know that there was concerns last week because Brent missed the uh, conference call and it was because of a scheduled event that happened. And sure enough, it sounds like that's what it was. They were in New York for the surgery. And so she's been going back and forth and man, I know that that's taxing in its own on top of actually going through the procedures. And so coaching a team and things are falling apart. Unfortunately, your wife is super sick. It's, I know it's weighing heavy on him, so definitely keep him and the kids um, in your thoughts and your prayers. It's hard to imagine having to coach a football game when the woman you love is struggling with this, and yet this is what Brent Venables is tasked to do. Also something he's really, really good at. Uh, as far as you know, defensive scheming and building a culture and building a program, with this in the backdrop, with this in the background, um, I, I think it says a lot about who he is as a person and who he is as a football coach. And now it's just about going and playing games. And Oklahoma's got two more games left this season. And this next one against the Alabama Crimson Tide, a team that is just on fire right now, uh, not including what they did just this last week to Mercer, but the previous two weeks against LSU and Missouri were absolutely lighting, lighting up the scoreboard. And so we know it's going to take an offensive performance from the Oklahoma Sooners, unlike something we've seen for much of this year. Yeah. And so, Jay, it, it begs the question, what does Oklahoma do at quarterback this week? Yeah, so we've got the captains that have, were dropped today by the team. And when you look at the captains list, you see one person on there right there close to the middle with Danny Stutzman. It's Jackson Arnold. So – the assumption there is, is that Jackson Arnold will be the starting quarterback in this game. Should he be the starting quarterback in this game, especially the way that Missouri ended and the way that Missouri went, you ask the question, is he the one that's going to throw the ball and get the ball out there? I'm assuming it, that's what it feels like in practice, but if that's the case, why not consider a two quarterback setup? Get Michael Hawkins out there for t particular plays. The one thing that we saw that, Alabama struggles with honestly is defending the run, especially a mobile quarterback. So being able to run on them as well as on LSU, as you look at the, these next two games might be something to consider. If you want to get out there and get a dub is run the ball with your quarterback. I mean, that's what Vanderbilt did. They just kept the clock constantly going. I mean, I think the time of possession was like 42 to whatever the next number is, at least 60, 12. They basically just kept the ball in their hands. So John, when I look at that, that's probably a strategy that Brent Venables and them can employ is, you know, Joe John Finley could, and, and Kevin Johns can find ways to keep the quarterbacks moving, scheme the rush and scheme the blocking to where they can keep the pocket moving. And just like I said, constantly keep the ball going and keep the clock going. And you never know, it may lead to a, a very respectable game. I think if you do that, that's your best path forward. Yeah. Run the ball as much as you possibly can with Jackson Arnold, with Xavier Robinson, with Taylor Tate, and with Javante Barnes. Just focus entirely on the run game. 
get downhill, yeah. run the ball. Don't worry about trying to drop back to pass. If you get into the, the game script in which you have to drop back to pass, so be it. But as long as the game is in within 10 points, just keep force feeding the run game because it's been the best part of your offense for much of the last month. Whether it was Javante Barnes running the football or Xavier Robinson a week ago or Taylor Tatum in the first half uh, a week ago against Missouri. Yeah. Running the football has been your best path to success. It gets you into much more manageable down in distances than what you've been able to get through the air. You've been more efficient, more you've had more success. You've had a higher success rate running the football. So just continue to lean into that. And like against Ole Miss, when Jackson Arnold was getting downhill in the run game, they were finding success. That's why they had so much success in the first half against Ole Miss is because they were finding success in the running game and Jackson yeah. in particular. So I think that is a great strategy for this week. And as much as, yes, Michael Hawkins provides you a more explosive running element, Jackson Arnold's no slouch in that respect either. He can he get he can get out in space and he can make some plays with his legs. He's just not as sudden of an athlete as Michael Hawkins is. Yeah, no, Jackson Arnold, he's a, he's a dual threat. He was listed as a dual threat coming into college, and that's what his game is. He's a dual threat. And so he can run. You just got to scheme it properly and don't have He's got to read there. it properly, too. Yeah, he had to read it properly, too. But don't have him out there doing the jack the the, the jackhammer nope. where yeah. he's trying to run everybody over. No, you, you need less of that. And that was, you know, that was the like the complete opposite of how I want him to be like Drake May, because Drake May was known for trying to run people over. And that's the last thing you want is your quarterback trying to get himself hurt. But I digress yeah. on that. You're right. The run game is critical. And we saw that even against Missouri when you brought in Xavier Robinson, who at practice said that Brent Venables, as well as DeMarco Murray, approached him about his red shirt and asked him, do you still want a red shirt or do you want to play the last couple games? And he molded over and decided, no, I want to be there for my team and play. So there's a good chance you'll have your big bruising running back in Xavier Robinson to go along with Taylor Tatum if he's healthy. And then I don't know about Javante Barnes or Gavin Salchuk. We'll find out about them on Wednesday when the initial report comes out. Uh, I do anticipate it to be as long as a CVS receipt, like it always is. So we'll see how many items they are actually on there and see if they add the peanut butter this week. But I, I hope that the whole goal is to find a way to get push and just run it nonstop. I think the, the main weak point some people have said has been the linebackers at Alabama, possibly a little bit of the secondary, but just run it down their throat, man, nonstop and see if, I like smash mouth football like that. I like whenever you can go out there and impose your will and just push people around. That's what we need to get to. And I know Schmitty works them boys out. We need to get out there and show it on the field too. Yeah. Three yards in a cloud of dust as our dads might, uh, as our dads might say, yeah. it's, I think it's going to be an important aspect of this game. And I think you got to reward Xavier Robinson for being willing to sacrifice that red shirt. You need to start that man this week. Yeah. I, you know, Javante Barnes, whether he's back or not, you got to give Xavier Robinson the start simply for what he did against Missouri. And then also being willing to give up that red shirt this year to just go play the football games because yeah. you're going to need him. You need all hands on deck in these final two games to put forth your best effort and, and have a chance to be successful. What success looks like for Oklahoma against Alabama, that's going to vary depending on who you ask, but to be able to put the best product on the field that you possibly can this week, you can't have dudes like Xavier Robinson opting out and sitting out. And listen, I, I appreciate the coaching staff for wanting to give him that at the same time. It was the coaching staff that put them in this situation for where he had to make a decision because he played That's as true. Parker Thune so eloquently detailed on, on X two snaps in two games each that were non-competitive games. Yeah. And you blew it at that point. And so it shouldn't have been Xavier Robinson's choice to make at this point in the season, but here we are and shout out to X Rob for uh standing up and standing tall. Cause X going to give it to you. Going to give it to you. X going to give it to you. Give it to you. Going to give it to you. <laughs> Kellen DeBoer had some things to say about the Oklahoma Sooners. And we'll discuss that coming up next year on locked on Sooners. Hey, Sooner fans, it's time for the Roy Player of the Week. You need to download the Roy app. You have heard us talk about it, Roy, this season, and how they are revolutionizing the NIL industry. Roy allows you, the fan, 
to have a say in who gets the NIL money. And here's what I absolutely love about Roy. You get your money back if that player transfers. Roy is helping us keep our team intact, and it's actually good for the game long term. You can show your support for our Roy Player of the Week. This week, it's Reagan Beers, the AP Player of the Week, and the SEC Player of the Week, the women's basketball star, who is shooting 75% from the field to start the season. She's on fire. So go download the Roy app. You can see what the logo looks like if you're watching on YouTube or go to joinroy.com. Download the Roy app or go to joinroy.com. Use promo code locked on. Every athlete from every team is there. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for full terms. Roy, support the players, change the game. And we got to talk about game time. They are hooking up the sports fan. I love checking it out when I especially want to go to a Thunder game. Um, they've always got some of the best deals out there. They curate it to make it easier to find the best price and on great seats. They've got the super deals. One thing is the game time picks because they curate it for all events from you know, like from sports to concerts. Like for example, Oklahoma versus Alabama, there's some pretty good prices here. Some lower bowl tickets here at $91. It's a night game. So you know a lot of people is going to want to check them out, but you can you can get take advantage of the pricing here. All in pricing, you can toggle the feature that shows the total up front with no surprise fees at the checkout. And you can even see a panoramic view of the seat right there in the app before you buy. So make sure you go check them out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Get, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for twenty percent off your first purchase. Terms apply. But again, create an account, redeem the code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? Game time. Again, thanks for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. Shout out to all the everydayers out there. Uh, shout out to our, our buddy um, that's been a longtime listener who had shoulder surgery this week. He's been listening. Uh, checked in with us as we had a, a late start to uh, our recording week. Stevie Rowland, man, shout out to you. Hope you're recovering well and uh, on the mend. Kalen DeBoer had some things to say about the Oklahoma Sooners when he met with the media on Monday. Let's start with what he had to say about Oklahoma on offense and defense. He said, it's going to take a great week of preparation, physical football team. That is Oklahoma all around their defense is, I think an extremely tough defense, always just what they do with their scheme and then their personnel and the way they fly around. We'll have to get ready for their offense with a couple of quarterbacks, potentially just some skilled players. Jay, what are your thoughts on what Kalen DeBoer had to say there? He's such a nice guy. So, so <laughs> coach speaky. So coach speaky, but no, on a serious note, I, I get, and a, even talking to other fans of like Alabama and other teams, when they talk about it, they're like, yeah, I mean, I mean, y'all's defense is, is legitimate. It's just, it needs help with, you know, the opposite side of the ball. And of course we know that if we can get just competence and, and, and a little bit with that side, boom, the defense will probably play a lot better. But Brent Venables has done a really good job of building the defense up is now he's got he's coaching for his job now to show that he can make sure that the offense is also as competent it's not easy coming in taking this job moving into a new conference and not having as much resources as you would like on the back end now it's time to fight for it this was the great example year there is no excuse he can go in and say look see what we're dealing with now you know what i need make it happen do it now and so with that, Kalen DeBoer recognizes, no, he's building a defense. He's building a group of players on the defensive side of the ball The what Oklahoma Sooners are going to be a problem there for years to come. All we got to do is get it right on offense. And in this game, we'll have the opportunity to, like you mentioned in the last segment. Oh, if we run the ball, we may have a chance to uh, kind of control more of the tempo of the game. And I think that's most important, especially when Jalen Miller is kind of struggling with passing. Um, if it's as windy as we expect, could help us even more there too. Yeah, the Oklahoma Center's defense is good to go, man. It, it's set up, and not just set up for this year, but set up for the long haul. Yeah, you're going to lose a guy or two this offseason when they go to the NFL draft, and you'll probably lose some folks to the transfer portal because that is just what it is. The nature of the game. But the core of this defense is set up for Oklahoma to continue to have success after this year. 
because of what Brent Venables has done the first three years, Zach Alley's contributions to the defense, obviously the defensive assistants, Todd Bates, Miguel Chavis, Brandon Hall, Jay Valai have all done a lot of really good things on the recruiting trail, on the developmental front, and it'll continue to do that as we get another off season in the books. It's just about the offense. The offense has to come along and, and it has to rediscover itself because yeah. this is, and this is an aberration year. There's only one other time in which Oklahoma's offense has averaged this few points in a season. And that was like 20 years ago. So like this does not happen often at the university of Oklahoma, whether it was under Bob Stoops or Lincoln Riley, or even the first two years of the Brent Venables era with as many complaints as we had about the offense under Jeff Levy in 2022, they still averaged 30 points a game in a year in which they got shut out in one game. Yeah. That's and then the crazy. next year they averaged 40 points a game. So like, Oklahoma offense is going to be okay. This is just a crap year with a crap ton of injuries with a crap offensive coordinator situation and ex inexperienced quarterbacks that weren't able to raise their game to overcome some of that. But the defense yeah. defense is good to go. And that's going to give Jalen Milrow some fits this week because what is Oklahoma really, really good at defending the run? Yeah. Jalen hey, Milrow can run, but can he run on Oklahoma? Here's what else Kalen DeBoer had to say. Oh, that's not that one. You look at the games that they've played, a lot of close games going into the second half and even the fourth quarter. The Missouri game obviously was a crazy ending and some plays made both ways just in the final two minutes. Each and every game takes on its own life. And for us, speaking of Alabama, we're focused on the next play and for us, the next game and everything that goes into being our best. And that's what our recipe for success has been here over the last month. And they've been very successful over the last month. Again, shut out Missouri absolutely molly whopped LSU and then put a spanking on their FCS opponent uh, this past week as well. So Jalen Milrow is playing very efficient football. He's running the ball really, really well. And Alabama is just turned it up here as uh, October rolled around. Yeah. That, that's, November, that's October, all it is. Right. Yeah. He just, just turn up here in November, just turn up the intensity of just running. I mean, last game for Milrow against was LSU. He just basically won the game with his legs, even apologized to his wide receivers and said, sorry about that, guys. They're like, Psh, we don't care. We win. We're winning. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun watching you run all over people. That's what we're going to have to slow down. If anything, I mean, that's, that's probably, that, that is the best asset of Oklahoma. We are number two in the country in, in rushing, defensive rushing efficiency. So, yeah, that's what we do well. Tops in the SEC. We don't let people just run all over us. You're going to probably get yards, but – you're not going to be able to run all over us. And if we can do a really good job of slowing that down, yeah, we'll have a good opportunity. The biggest thing is going to be not only the pressure on Milrow, but also, you know, finding those holes, right? Find those gaps. We probably should, t I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep saying it over and over. If we take a book out of what uh, PK did down in Texas against us, we had Anthony Hill literally just find whatever the hole was and fill it immediately from the quarterback. That would be super helpful against a guy like Jalen Milrow. He's going to find the hole within the blocking, and he's going to try to make that run. Have somebody that spies specifically for that while also guarding the middle of the field where they can jump and knock something down. If you can find a way to make him for, force him to try to scramble and you feel that hole and you meet him right there in that spot, it's going to make life very painful for him, and that's probably the best thing that we could possibly do for ourselves. Yeah, it's going to be a lot for, on the interior defensive line to not let him get easy stuff up the middle and then those edges play and contain the way that they can play contain. Ethan Downs and Armisen Thomas have done a great job keeping everything funneled inside to the defensive tackles or making it stretch to where they have to go backwards to go forward. So I, I like Oklahoma's matchup in the box, in the front seven. It's going to be coming. Also, you're going to have to contain Ryan Williams and Jeremy Bernard. You got to contain those guys. They are explosive players that can make big plays. And Oklahoma has given up some explosives in the passing game. And that's going to be a key factor in this one. Keep everything in front of you. Make Jalen Milrow play in the intermediate area of the field. Make him run the ball. And yes. you might have a chance to slow down this Alabama offense a little bit. We got our, our broadcast information for LSU. And it should probably come as no surprise to anybody. I love a deal as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals just to save a few bucks. It has to be easy. 
And that's why I was so ecstatic when I found out about, about Mint Mobile. My brother-in-law recommended it to me years ago, and then I got on board. There were no hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile says it's easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I tried it on it, and I've been with them. My wife's been with them for years. My, my brother-in-law's family for years. My father and mother-in-law, they got on Mint Mobile in the last couple of years. It's really that easy to get wireless for $15 a month. The longest part is the process that takes to cancel your, your subscription with your old provider. To cancel your service with your old provider is the longest of the entire setup process. To get started, you go to mintmobile.com slash locked on college. There you'll see that right now, all three month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your own phone number along with all your existing contracts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for only $15 a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash locked on college. That's mintmobile.com slash locked on college. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash locked on college. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plans. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Jay, the Oklahoma Sooners will play their sixth night game. Actually, they'll play their fifth night game this Saturday against Alabama. Then they'll play their sixth against LSU the following week, which really should come as no surprise to anybody because one, the SEC loves to give LSU night games and two, with Oklahoma making their first trip down to the bayou, you knew that it was going to be in prime time. A uh, little little nugget here for you. Under Brian Kelly, the LSU Tigers are 13-1 and one in prime time games at home. Their only loss coming a couple weeks ago to the Alabama Crimson Tide. But... Eight of those wins came against non-Power 4 programs. John, all we wanted to do was play Nebraska at night. <laughs> but now we get to play everybody else at night. That, literally, we play everybody at night now. Like, literally, everyone. Heck, we had a non-conference home-and-home against Nebraska, and guess what? Not we either. still didn't play them at night. Mm -hmm. So now that we're in the SEC, hopefully we have placed Nebraska on our non-con schedule again. And there is a very good chance that the SEC says, you know what? We're we'll going to give you night. what you wanted. Yeah. But it's kind of crazy if you think about it. That's, we'll, have, we'll finish the season with six night games with, what, two games at 11 o'clock? And technically one of those was only at 11 o'clock because we had to move the game because of the weather. Mm -hmm. So it's even more bananas that we kind of looked at the big noon and like, nah, now we're not doing that no more. Yeah. We're doing midday, late afternoon or night. And that's it. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I have an appreciation for it while at the same time, the drive home at night after a game, it's not as it's not as good as I would have anticipated. That yeah. midday schedule does feel pretty great, but watching it on television at night, watching Oklahoma Sooners at night, especially at Gaylord Memorial under the lights, is always a fantastic experience. So it's gonna be fun this weekend with Bama. It's gonna be even better down there at Death Valley, seeing how crazy it gets there. Yeah, it, it's going to be an absolute scene, and you know the fans are going to be jacked for that matchup. Uh, it's fun just to consider that Oklahoma is going to get more of these prime time. I bet it kind of regresses to the mean a little bit next year where maybe they don't play six night games, but Oklahoma, cause Oklahoma is just two and two in them. So I'm not necessarily like loving that Oklahoma is going to be playing two more night games, uh, one at home, one on the road, but it's a fun atmosphere at least. And, and it's going to be a fun environment and for college football in general, it's just fun. Now, True. hopefully Oklahoma fans show up for this one because, listen, this season has not gone how anybody expected, but Alabama's coming to town. Yeah, Alabama's coming. You got to come. You got to be a part of the atmosphere. Got to be a part of the environment. You got to come and make life difficult on Jalen Milrow and the Alabama Crimson Tide. You, it, it's just one of those. We don't know the next time Alabama is going to be coming to Norman. Yeah, that's true. We don't know we what don't, the we future holds for Oklahoma in the SEC. 
So yeah, this is next... your opportunity to see the Crimson Tide, those numbers on the side of the helmet, rolling into your town. For the first time since what's 03? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 been 21 years since the last time Alabama stepped in the state of Oklahoma to play a game. So yeah, you're 100% right. You got to take advantage of it. And the good thing is, I mean, next year, I don't know about it hitting the mean because we got the same schedule of people next year. There's a really good chance that everybody on our schedule is still good. So they're probably going to have to force us to play all those games at night. My goodness, that's going to be wild. Actually, now I anticipate that um, uh, Red River is probably going to be a midday game again. And, yeah. which, you know, I totally get it because it makes sense. It, everybody liked it, but I digress. Yeah, it's crazy to see that we have this many. I mean, when Michigan comes to town next year, probably going to be a night game too. So it's just, I would have never thought. We need to figure out what we need to do to make it exciting there in Gaylord Memorial Stadium at night. We need to find some new tradition to get the lights going. I want to be like William Bryce Stadium, like South Carolina does. I want to be like the whiteout at Penn State. I want to do something like South Carolina with inner Sandman. I want something to just be energetic and where it just, just where you can feel the pulse of it inside the stadium. We need to find something because we need to make it worth it, worth everybody's while to where when they give us that, they're like, yeah, we're in. It's, it's not, listen, it's Oklahoma. It's a blue blood program. It's one of the best of all time. But would people consider it a destination if they weren't an Oklahoma fan? Like you think about the places in college football that you want to go and be a part of the environment and the experience. You think of Virginia Tech. You think right. of going up to Madison, Wisconsin, being a part of Jump Around. Uh, you know, you think about Sandstorm at South Carolina. Like, you think about going down to the bayou and being a part of what they do at LSU because it's just different, right? Oklahoma's got a great home field. They've got a great fan base that's passionate and, and powerful when visiting teams come to town. But is there that one thing that like sets them apart as Oklahoma? And I know there's going to be a lot of people that sit, sit here and say, Oklahoma doesn't need any of that because they're Oklahoma. At the same time, we've seen – a little bit of the fourth quarter quarter lull or that third quarter to fourth quarter lull as they try to introduce different songs and we just haven't found the right fit. So there's still some work to be done with the on-field presentation or the in-game presentation, I should say. Right. But if you're looking at next year's schedule, you said Michigan probably, probably be a night game. Are there others that you look at and you're like, that one's going to be night, that one will be night, that one will be night. The one that pops to me is at Tennessee, at Neyland Stadium. I think that one just is prime for another night game. This is probably going to be your night games at South Carolina at Williams Bryce, because it's a fantastic spectacle. Nayland stadium against Tennessee. I could totally see us going to Brian Denny and it'd be a night game, but it could also be a two thirty game. They do a lot of two thirty games for Alabama. And I don't know why I'm guessing that's just how it is. Michigan. I think is going to be a night game. So I think Tennessee, South Carolina, Michigan. I think home-wise, it's Michigan. I think LSU may get the night treatment. You might get Ole Miss the night treatment, too. It all depends on how good they are once we face them. But having Michigan on the calendar with Sharon Moore coming home for the first time since you know he left from being a player at Oklahoma, you know they're going to force that one to be a night game. Um yeah, looking at that one, I'm seeing thinking that's Oklahoma's probably the played one. Missouri a lot at night. Yeah, the like, Missouri that was, one. That probably, was a popular one when they were both in the Big Twelve. That's for true. night for night slots. So if we're looking at it, Michigan, I'm gonna say Michigan, LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, South Carolina, Tennessee. I think we have six again. There you go. So we'll get a we'll get Oklahoma in prime time a lot next year. So make sure you got plenty of coffee available to you as you try to balance it out with your beverages of choice uh, during pregame. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in, being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. And we are your team every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Follow Jay on Twitter at Unfair Sports. Check out his channel at Unfair Sports as well. Follow me at John Nine Williams. You can read my work covering the Sooners over at Soonerswire.com. The show is at Locked On Sooners on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, what have you. We are there. And again, thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. 
We're going to have our crossover with the folks from Locked On Bama coming up this week as well to get you ready for OU and Bama. It's going to be a fun one where we get to discuss the, the ins and outs of both teams and what's trending for the Crimson Tide as well as the Oklahoma Sooners. But until next time, he's Jay Smith. I'm John Williams. We'll talk to you then. Boomer. Sooner.